Hi, I'm Nadia. Hi, I'm Alia. And I'm Namira. And, and this, this is Operation, Operation Tomato, Tomato Meter. So, if you haven't ever gone down in a basement and then say, I'll be right back. Uh-huh. Ah, I see what you did there. I see. Then you definitely know the notorious ghost race from the Scream movies. So since 1996, the horror slasher black comedy film franchise Scream has taken the whole genre of movies to another level. And it often uses very satirical comedy of cliches mm -hmm. in horror films. Um, so recently, the fifth Scream, which is a direct sequel to the fourth one, which came out in 2011, was released. Um, and it's set 25 years after the Ghostface Killer's last murders from the previous film. And in this one, a new Ghostface Killer has appeared in the city of Woodsboro, and the mysterious murderer begins to terrorize another group of teens. The film features many new faces, but uh, we also see returning characters from Scream 4 in the sequel. Alright, so today is an exciting episode because it's our first time reviewing a horror film. And so, yeah, let's get into it. Our first segment, Rotten or Not, and let's see what the tomato heads think of this film. So, what do you guys think the critics at Rotten Tomatoes gave the film? Okay, I... Now, if you watched last week's episode, I may sound like a broken record myself, <laughs> but... Similarly to The Matrix, I wasn't so pleased with the Scream in terms of plot because it was a little too meta for me and it was seemed like it, it seemed like it was banking too much on that self-awareness joke. And yes, yeah, so I would give it a 60. I'm just not pleased with it. I wholeheartedly agree. I'll give it a 65 personally because I think that critics might have enjoyed um you know, just like the revive of the entire franchise, and they might have enjoyed having that slasher being back that, that is so infamous that we always see it every Halloween, you know? But um, I think something that they did well was like those parallels between like the actual movie and then um, recreating scenes almost. I feel like that was done well, and I think people would have liked that kind of servicing. I would disagree, but we can get into that <laughs> later. I'm gonna get you, Namira. <laughs> it will be you, Leah. So I have a bit of a different opinion on this. I actually really like the film. I haven't okay. seen too many horror movies in mm -hmm. my time, but I think that critics would have given it like an average rating. So maybe about a 70, but I might even rate it higher because I really enjoyed it. See, I disagree again. <laughs> I'm coming for everyone today. I'm, not I'm nodding along like, yeah. <laughs> but we'll get into it. But for now, will our lovely producer show us the score? Let's see. 76? Oh, wow. Okay. okay. Is this the critic, critic score? score? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dark, this wow. Okay. Well, I mean, okay, it's only 16 points away from what we said, so it's not too drastic. Mm -hmm. Like, if they had given it like an 80, then I would be like, that's too much. But this 76? Okay. That's all right. I can see. Okay. Well, okay. <laughs> Nadia does not agree. Well, they were maybe a little too generous, but on to the audience's point of view, I feel like they would be around the same as the critics, maybe in the 80s, because I just feel like the fan servicing. I think after 25, year, 25 years, fans would be a little, you know, of course they're going to enjoy watching it, I mean, but yeah. I mean, it almost seems like the writers were thinking that people in the audience thought of Scream as this classic series of films, but I don't think that many people actually saw the sequels. I think that most people maybe saw the first one yeah. and maybe the one in 2011. So some fans might have been very confused at this, um, but I agree that the audience score would be in the 80s. I think yeah. that it would definitely be higher than the critic score, but um, people might not have been that into it or they might not have thought yeah. that its whole commentary was correct. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think, Tamira? I think I would probably rate it like, I don't want to say an 80 because I didn't like it that much as an audience member myself. I think I'm going to give yeah. it like a 78. But Namir, you're a critic now. You're not an audience member. I'm still a the audience, <laughs> you know, you know. Okay. I'll say 85. Ooh, okay, oh. 85. Okay. But honestly, I think that like, um, as you were saying, like I agree that a lot of people might have not been like watching with all the knowledge of all the sequels that yeah. came before it. Maybe they've seen the first one. And I think as someone who can't remember the sequels, but I can remember the first initial storyline. Yeah. Like, it was good to see all of that um, kind of come into play in this movie, especially. Mm -hmm. So I think people might have received that really well. Seeing, like, Courtney Cox's character, all these different people coming back, and how it always ties to the original. Yeah. Yeah. It's a big idea throughout the entire film. So what's your score? 
78. Okay, you said 85. Okay, I realized I didn't give a score. I would say, I'll say 79. Okay. I think 85 is probably what I would give it personally, too. Oh, okay. Or uh, personally, 60. (laughs) (laughs) I have to keep saying that. But anyways, will our lovely producer again show us the audience score? I see an 8. I see. (laughs) Through the paper. 83. Okay. 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 All right. So we were all pretty close. And yet we were right. It would be higher than the critics. And yeah, in the 80s. So I'm not surprised by that. But yeah, just personally, I would disagree. What do you guys think? I agree with that. You agree? <laughs> I don't have to ask you. Leah, <laughs> your case right now. Yeah, right now. Tell us. Right now. It was a fun movie. <laughs> this became an interrogation, not a podcast. Exactly. <laughs> if you think of it as its own individual film, even without considering it as a sequel or a requel of a reboot slash sequel. <laughs> that whole thing. Right, right. That was I'm actually very... Track. I, I like that. There were some parts of it that I wasn't such a fan of, like maybe some of the more teenage moments that I didn't think were quite yeah. necessary. Um, but it was fun to see it, and, and as one of my first slasher films, um, I appreciated that yeah. it wasn't too crazy with the gruesomeness and everything, mm-hmm. but it, I almost wanted it to be more scary. And I really liked it. I loved everything, um, the acting I loved. Every scene where the killer was coming after them, like the one where they were in the hospital and there was no one else in the hospital. Yeah. Maybe that was it wasn't believable, scene. but it was really good. Well, it definitely, it served its purpose in scaring you, so I agree with that. It, I definitely agree it was a fun watch, but like from a critical standpoint, that was where I started getting a little less fun. So I just, I agree with you, some of the teenage points. I think acting was good, but I think in regards to, like we said, some of the teenage aspects or like some scenes to me were just kind of forced or like some of the writing didn't strike me so well it did kind of hit me off Uh, it was just like off-putting i mean but yeah so some of the moments i just wasn't really enjoying but what do you think namira i 100 percent agree i think that like the dialogue was really off-putting yeah in this movie i don't know why like i remember visibly like being like repulsed when um (laughs) the main character tara said like i would like that if she would stay like at the hospital i was like Change it up. Not everyone says I would like that. Like, make it more human, I feel. Yeah. But the actors, I love the actors in They're this movie. They're good, yeah. I think the cast was, like, so spot on, even though I, I kind of feel like Tara looked much younger than the other high schoolers. That's just my personal opinion. That's kind of true. I feel, I feel like she's, like, young. our age. But I know the actress is probably older in real life. So. I, she was on You Season 2, which I think it's good. Like, they're keeping, like, yeah. new and upcoming faces. But, like, her compared to, um... The jock character, he looks like he's 20. Oh, yeah, they look like they're... Well, that's like, just bit, the yeah. casting like, tools. I was like, okay, all right. And I know Dylan, I know Dylan Manette is more than 20 years old now. We are. <laughs> so, you know, but he can pull it off, I guess. I mean, one line that stood out to me, I can't remember other lines that repulsed me like he's... But one towards the end was when... Uh, I forgot his name, but the boyfriend that ended up being one of the ghost faces, he Spoiler said... Richie. Uh, Richie. Oh, we're not supposed to... Oh, no. Spoiler. Spoiler. Sorry, I mean, you're watching a review podcast, guys. Come on. So, anyways, but when, uh, when Richie, you said, when at the end he says, how is fandom toxic? And he's, like, about to kill someone. I was just looking at that, and I said, like, your ghost face says, how is fandom toxic? And I said, I must be watching a parody right now. <laughs> yeah. And it did... Uh, what's the word? Sit, satirize. <laughs> it's satirical, okay? It's satirical, guys. But, like, in some ways, it did make commentary about, like, fandoms and even teenagers today. And I couldn't tell if it was almost, like, making a joke out of, like, teenagers. Like, saying how ridiculous some fandoms are or, like, when they go too far. I mean, the whole... Pur- that's actually true. Like, the whole purpose of the film is showing, like, fans going too far to even replicate murders because yeah. they're not happy with the films. So it does, in some regard, make commentary like that. But, yeah, just that writing line. From a writing standpoint, that line was definitely just took off the edge of, like, the horror for me. So I'm just like, I'm into it, and then I hear, how is fandom toxic? <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> okay. But anyways, any other points we have? Well, the writing, I thought the writing was very good at some parts, but sometimes I agree. It was a little for lack of a better word, cringy. Yeah. <laughs> but in a way, it was also making fun of teenagers yeah. and just people in general and the, the idea of toxic fandom. That's why the dialogue toward the end was so bad. But um, something I think that they did do well, honestly, was um, the scoring. Specifically, the scene where um, Dylan Manette's character, Wes, he's going yes. to get killed. Oh, I just know they kept about building up the um, the musical tension, yeah. and then behind like every like fridge <laughs> or door. Yeah, and I think that was so well done because I was always on the edge of my seat, waiting to see when Ghostface would come, only to find out that 
It's yeah. actually after Judy Hopkins. First. My mom and I were laughing at that part. I mean, of course, we were scared. But we, were g- <laughs> we were giggling, but, like, I would get, you know, so, like, anticipating what's to come when he closes the door and then blow up nothing and then and then it happened three times and then the third time i was like laughing to my mom we were just like oh my god so you don't know but it was definitely at like that, that was time. good suspense that i have to say is meta humor because yeah. they know yes. that's what they did in the first previous films and that's a meta humor humor that i like because that's subtle and that's what you just like you can tell if you've been watching the other meta meta humor in the film was just like you said, so on the nose, and it was like spoon fed to you. Like this is we're we're meta ing right now. <laughs> <laughs> so I just like that subtle one with the scoring. But they were also making fun of themselves, making fun of themselves. If that makes sense. Yeah, it, it was, was meta of meta, me- and it got confusing. But <laughs> because they're, they're, they're making fun franchise. of requels in a requel. Yeah, yeah. And I really like that, especially when they were referencing stab eight was just called stab. As though, as if as this movie, as if we don't know. <laughs> I was like, "What movie am I watching right now?" Scream. Is Scream. <laughs> like, didn't this come out in 1996? <laughs> yeah. We got transported, but yeah, it like you said, they were definitely making fun of themselves, and that's where I started getting really put off. I know I've said this in a previous episode, but the whole thing with the industry right now, with like sequels and reboots and remakes, and I think we there's like a general consensus that's getting tired, but now what's been happening recently very recently i noticed with the matrix and now with this is like meta humor as if it's almost like it's okay to make a reboot as long as we acknowledge that we're aware of it you know and it's like Mm kind of like almost as if it like uh, lessens it a little bit but i does not pass with me that still doesn't it was funny the first few times like matrix made a few jokes i'm like oh yeah you're referencing yourself haha now i'm getting tired of it okay i'm done so I just, I was, I left the theater feeling pretty displeased about that. No, no, I'm here with you. I feel like the the amount of times it was done in this Scream movie it was, was a bit excessive. It like, was. There's a good solid, like, three different times that they did it on yeah. three different events. And it's like, okay, we get it. But something I want to talk about. Why didn't the sheriff have a gun when she was going on a drive? <laughs> That's the only thing in my mind to this to this moment. Like, that was brutal. Was, was like, also, why, why only one guy in town got a gun? I'm sorry, but <laughs> do we can do everything for everyone. I the fact the fact that he died, that yeah, this that, movie's done for me. This, okay? He always comes back, but I guess not. But the fact that my mom said this, she leaned over and she was like, How did no one see that cop get brutally murdered on her front lawn in broad daylight? Yeah. And it was loud. And she came in with her car blasting the siren and no one looked out the window like, oh my, she's getting murdered. She calls for backup also. Where was the backup? She said, I I need people at my house. Yeah. Where were they? Never live in Woodsboro. It was just ridiculous. It was definitely very, when my mom said that, I was like, you're right. No one saw any of this happen (laughs) on the front lawn. How small is this town? Where is everyone? They're all getting murdered. That's <laughs> brutal. Going back to the recreating, I thought it was... I haven't watched two, th- two, two, three, and four, so I can't really say much about those, and I don't know what they did, but as for one, which I watched to prepare for this film, I watched it and I really enjoyed it, but then going into Scream 5, to see the same, almost exact same first sequence and last sequence with the whole thing being the house and if it following the same formula of two people and then they're in the kitchen and they get overpowered and then the good guys win (laughs) and then one of the ghost faces comes back to life for a second before being shot again which makes no sense i didn't even realize that was her i was like who's that yeah (laughs) she got burned and she came back i couldn't it was was, ridiculous in the first movie as well it's a cliche which yeah so i actually really like that part I don't know, I just don't, I mean, I just, the cliches don't work for me just remembering. This. <laughs> it's so funny, like, I'll be critiquing nowhere. something. She's like, you know? It's so funny, I'll be critiquing something, and Lily goes, I really like that. <laughs> it gave Tara uh, um, a, a part in that. She was able to kill someone. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's for she Tara. No, I think one of my favorite shots was probably, like, um, the stance after Sam just finished stabbing Richie to death, and... It's kind of like this, like really like empowering moment for her because like the other two behind her, like the original characters, they know what she's going through. Yeah. They know how much this takes like, a toll, and like they're kind of there to tell her and, and like comfort her in this moment. I think it was just a nice, like it was a wider shot too. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So I like that. See, that's what happens. 
that's the benefit of wider shots sometimes. Mm-hmm. So sometimes it was just too jump like cutty between face, face, face. And I mentioned this True. with the Eternals. When it just goes from face to face to face to face to face, I'm like, what th- does the room look like? What are we in right now? But anyways. So, so maybe the yeah. point wasn't putting the audience in the room. Maybe it was putting us in the minds of the characters. <gasps> Ooh, okay. Deep thinker, I see. I think what our consensus is here is that maybe the beginning wasn't so great or maybe we don't think that it was that great overall. But the ending was really good. I liked how they did that with Sam and her character. And that's probably what made it for me. That's probably why I ended up liking it so much, Sam's was the ending and how it was wrapped up. I, I would be all right if I saw another Scream movie, especially because we didn't see Sam's mother. Because yes, she was stuck in is, London, yeah. I believe. Yeah, so which is ridiculous that she didn't come see her daughter who yeah. was stabbed like yeah. 14 I guess times. I yeah. about it. No, I don't care about the mother. You know what? <laughs> yeah, I think that she's... Scream 5 needs to be the last one. I mean, Scream. Sorry, yeah. just Scream. Oh, just Scream. We don't need to keep track of But anymore. yeah, um, I would hope there's not another Scream movie. Make another slasher film. Scream is not the only... Make Scream is not... <laughs> Make Stab. Make Stab. <laughs> but just... We don't need more screams. Stop, please, Hollywood, stop making these films. <laughs> they don't need to be necessarily as self-aware, I think. Yeah. <laughs> well, on mm-hmm. that note, I think that's a wrap for today's episode. I mm-hmm. think, yeah. So our general, well, not general consensus, because you liked it, which is fine. You have your opinion, <laughs> but yeah. I didn't enjoy it as much, and that's my final thought. It was average. We can say that, yeah. <laughs> All right, so before we close, just a quick reminder to rate us on Apple Podcasts, Operation Tomato Meter, give us five stars, and check out the Classics Instagram and TikTok page at THHS Classic to see our bloopers, behind the scenes, and other cool projects we are working on. And before we go, we're also really happy to announce that the Classics Operation Tomato Meter team has partnered with Mr. McCaughey's new Marvel-centered podcast called The 27, in which he invites students each week to share their take on one of the superhero films. And he's going in chronological order right now. And I guess you could say we are expanding the Tomato Meter cinematic universe. Yeah, Yeah, that's really exciting. That's right, yeah. Our very own cinematic universe, exactly. (laughs) TCU. (laughs) <laughs> so stay tuned for more outstanding audio and visual content from Operation Tomato Meter and Mr. McCaughey's podcast. Click the link in the description to see the 27th new episode on the film, Captain Marvel, where all three of us are going to be featured. And let us know in the comments your thoughts on today's episode, Scream or the 27. Thanks for watching and see you guys next week. Bye! Bye-bye.